Hey everybody, in this video I'm gonna tell you Jordan Peterson's eight steps to rock solid confidence. You know, if you're like me, it's real easy to watch Jordan Peterson's material for like three hours completely entranced, and at the end of it, it's kind of hard to actually uh, put together what you've learned and do something actionable. So this is what I've done in this video. I've actually taken notes and come up with the eight biggest things that you can do in your life to have that unshakable self-confidence. So if you don't have the level of confidence that you want at this point in your life, then you are going to love this video. Now, before I get started with the eight steps, I just wanna let you know that if you don't have that level of self-confidence that you desire in your life, then you are not alone. The truth is that most people don't have the confidence that they would like to have. And I've been through this myself. When I was younger, my confidence was awful. I mean, I could not talk to a girl that I was attracted to. I was scared to death. I couldn't bring myself to ask for somebody to spot me at the gym. I mean, I remember I'd be even walking in a public place, like I'd be walking down the street, and then I would recognize that I was walking the wrong way, and then instead of turning around immediately and going the other way, I would stop and like pull out my phone and pretend to look at it and then turn around and go the other way. Like I was giving, I was giving an excuse to all the strangers around me who might see me change my direction because I felt that I needed to validate myself to them just because I was changing my direction. So that's where I used to be and my confidence was horrible. So if you were lacking self-confidence in your life, then believe me, I totally understand. So I'm gonna go over Jordan Peterson's eight rules for unshakable self-confidence, and I'm also gonna give you a little bit of my own insight, my own experience, having fought this battle myself. Okay, rule number one is to do something meaningful with your life. You know, a lot of people think that the way to self-confidence is just some like psychological trick or just to, just to see yourself as complete, that sort of thing. But self-confidence is earned and that's gonna be kind of the gist of this material. And if you are walking down the wrong path in your life, then you're not gonna have that confidence because in some respect, the confidence is your soul telling you that you are on the right path. So if you think about it, if you're walking down the path uh, to a cliff or you're walking down a dead end and some part of you knows that you're walking towards a dead end, well, it doesn't matter how, how high your head is held up and how far back your shoulders are. It doesn't matter what your vocal tonality is. It doesn't matter how many affirmations you say to yourself at night. You're you're just not gonna have that confidence because that part of you is gonna be saying, hey buddy, you're walking the wrong way. So if you wanna have self-confidence in life, you have to be walking the right way in life. And walking the right way means finding your unique purpose. And I know that that's no small feat to find your purpose. I talk about that a lot. Uh, in this video, I talk about that among others. So if you haven't found purpose in your life already, then step one obviously is to start looking for it. And just the fact that you're looking for it is working towards your purpose. So, so you'll feel a boost in your self-confidence immediately as soon as you start doing that. So step one is to do something meaningful with your life. And I know that's difficult, so I'm gonna make more videos about that in the future. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already. Now, step two is to have faith that doing the right things will bring the optimal outcome. I talk about how all the time, if you wanna be successful at just about anything, you absolutely need to have faith. It's such an incredibly powerful motivator. And you know, a lot of people will say that, oh, it doesn't really matter what your religious beliefs are. You can do X, Y, Z. Um, so let me be the first to say that that's not true at all. It does matter. It matters a lot. Because if you don't have any belief in a higher power, if you don't believe in a higher purpose, then you have no reason to believe that doing the right things will bring the right outcome. And because you have no reason to believe that effort will produce the outcome, because you have no proof of that, right? There is zero proof that you trying as hard as you can and doing all the right things will bring the outcome you desire. That's something that you 100% have to take on faith. There is no proof of it until after you've already done it. So if you don't have the basis for that faith that doing the right things will bring the right outcome, then how much effort are you going to put in? How much risk are you going to take uh, to making that happen? Well, probably not very much. Right, because you don't even believe that it's possible. But on the other hand, if you have that faith, if you believe that doing the right things will bring the optimal outcome, then that's so much more motivating to actually do those right things. And 
you'll see after you've been doing those right things for a year or two years or five years, you'll see how your life changes completely. That faith that you have in the beginning will produce that confidence and that confidence and your faith will be constantly reinforced as you see your life improving. Okay, now step three is to be proud of who you are becoming instead of who you are now. You know, I hear a lot of people saying things like, oh, you should love yourself just as you are, and you're perfect, and you're enough, blah, 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 right? But if you try to convince yourself of that, if you look in the mirror and tell yourself you're perfect just as you are, then some part of your subconscious brain is going to say, well, you're a fat slob who sits on the couch eating Doritos and watching football five hours a day. What do you have to be proud of? Right, if you haven't really done much in your life up to this point, then it's gonna be pretty hard to be proud of that and it's gonna be pretty hard to have any self-confidence based on that. But if you are committed to an ideal in the future, if you have visualized the person that you are to become in the future and you are actively working every day towards becoming that person, well, then you can be proud of who you are becoming. You know, a lot of spiritual traditions teach that time is kind of an illusion, that the future exists the same way that the present exists. So if you were on that track to a better future, if you were putting in the work, if you were doing what you need to do to get to that better future, well, you can be proud of it today and that will give you a lot of confidence. So chances are, if you're lacking confidence now, then you probably don't have a whole lot to be proud of today, but you have enormous potential because you are a child of God. And I think that's what the people who say that you should love yourself because you're enough and all of that are saying, uh, because you are enough, but you, you are enough in your potential, which you haven't yet developed. So you have to actively work to develop that potential and you have to have that vision in your mind of who you are to become. That's what you can be proud of. That's what can give you confidence. Okay, step number four is to voluntarily expose yourself to what you're afraid of. A big part of realizing your potential is getting over your fear. And when I say getting over your fear, I don't mean getting rid of your fear. I mean acting rightly even in spite of the fear. And like Jordan Peterson likes to say, this is what all of our mythology is based on. Every hero myth that we have, right, about the, the valiant hero that goes and fights the dragon in order to get the gold. Well, the hero is always afraid of the dragon. Why? Because the dragon is dangerous. The dragon can hurt him. It makes sense to be afraid of the dragon, but he goes and fights the dragon anyway. So if you want to get the gold, if you want to have the outcomes that you desire in your life and therefore have the confidence of the hero who is fighting for the outcomes that he desires in life, you have to face the dragons in your life. You can do that a little bit at a time, right? You can break that down into small steps. So chances are that there's a lot of things that you're afraid to do. So find the one thing that you're least afraid of and force yourself to do that one first. And then find one that's a little bit scarier. And now you have the confidence that you faced the first fear. Now you have a little bit more confidence to face a bigger fear, right? And the more you face fears in your life and the more you defeat them, the more you will earn that self-confidence that you desire. Okay, now step number five is to see your life as an adventure. You might have noticed that every adventure, every compelling story, there is always adversity, there is always risk, there is always difficulty. I mean, if you think about that story about the guy fighting the dragon to get the gold, uh, if he just walks for 15 minutes down a nicely lit paved road and there the gold is at the end of the road and he grabs the gold and brings it home, well, that's not an adventure. Right? That's a pretty boring story. I mean, if you think about any of our, our favorite stories in our culture, if you think about uh, Frodo and the Lord of the Rings just walks the ring down a well-lit paved path and drops it in the fire without any adversity along the way, well, that's not an adventure. That's not much of a story. So recognize that your life is an adventure and all of the adversity, all of the difficulty, all of the danger that exists in your life is part of the adventure. Right? If you frame it in that way, then all of a sudden it, it kind of morphs itself from being scary and overwhelming to being kind of exciting. That you are the hero of your own adventure. Recognize your life that way because that's the way it is. That's why all of that mythology is so compelling to us because that's how our soul recognizes our own life. Your, your life is an adventure, so treat it that way and your confidence will skyrocket.
Now, step number six is to speak your truth. Now, if you know anything about Jordan Peterson, you know that this is kind of how he gained notoriety, that all of these crazy social justice warrior people were demanding that college professors and everyone else actually, they were, they were mandating by government law that everybody had to call people by their pronoun of choice. And this, this list of gender pronouns is ever expanding, right? It was like 45 different pronouns on Facebook and then the social justice warriors complained because now they had 65 and then the next week they had 87, right? It's constantly expanding. It's, it's complete lunacy. And most of the college professors, well, academia tends to be giant cowards in Jordan Peterson's estimation and my estimation as well but Dr. Peterson was the one person that stood up to this and he said no I will not speak these words because they are not the truth and I will oppose this law of government mandated speech because it is antithetical to my Western values and because this one lonely college professor who nobody else in his college supported by the way a whole bunch of the other professors signed a petition to get him fired from the college but he stuck to it he spoke his truth and because he spoke his truth he is now super famous super successful uh, his book is a new york times bestseller he has millions and millions and millions of views on youtube because he was willing to speak his truth Whereas all the petty losers that signed the petition to get him fired from his job are languishing in obscurity and nobody is ever going to know their name. They're going to continue to be useless pawns of a corrupt system who will never do anything worthwhile with their lives if they don't completely change their behavior. So you have to be willing to speak your truth even when it's dangerous, which it often is. And you might be wrong, by the way. When I say your truth, I don't mean the truth. I don't mean the objective truth. I mean what you believe to be true. And even if you were wrong, if you speak it in public, if you speak it out loud, you give people the opportunity to tell you why you're wrong. And if you have the humility to accept that you were wrong and recognize that you were wrong, then you can change your beliefs to be more in line with what the truth actually is and your life will get better as a result. So you don't know everything and you are gonna be wrong sometimes because you're a fallible human being. Speak the truth to the best of your abilities anyway. Don't keep it to yourself because it's unpopular. Speak what you believe to be the truth because you have the faith, as we said earlier, that if you do the right things, then you will have the right outcome. So you can imagine if you were the person who's towing the line and, and just repeating whatever politically correct lunacy is forced down your throat, how are you gonna feel about yourself? How is your self-confidence gonna be that you are a miserable little worm who is not willing to say what you truly believe because you're afraid of reprisal by somebody else. How is your self-confidence gonna be? Not great, but if you are willing to be the lone voice of reason in a sea of madness, the one person who is willing to say that the emperor has no clothes, then you can have confidence because you are speaking your truth and you are being true to yourself. So if you wanna be confident, speak the truth. Step number seven is to always be gaining knowledge. The more you know about the world, the more confident you can be stepping through it. Think about a simple analogy. A few months ago, I was in the Amazon. Uh, I was only there for a few days, and I had a guide who had been there for years and years, and he knew the place like the back of his hand. He knew where everything was, and he, he took us around uh, in a boat and walking through the jungle and that sort of thing. If I was to go there by myself without the guide, and I was walking through the Amazon jungle exploring, my confidence would have been zero. I would have been scared to death that I was gonna be eaten by tarantulas and anacondas, and I was gonna lose my way, and I was gonna be stuck in the forest forever, right? Or I was gonna get eaten by cannibals, because there are still primitive tribes in the Amazon who live by their own rules. They just do what they want. Anyway, so think about the confidence of the guide who has been through the same route a thousand times versus the confidence of me who doesn't know the place at all. Well, the difference is in the knowledge that the guide has gained the knowledge necessary to be able to go through this route safely, even though there are many dangers. But I haven't had that knowledge at all. If I was to gain that knowledge, I would be much more confident. And the same is true for life in general. If you have the knowledge to go through life in the best possible manner, then you can have so much more confidence in doing so. So always be gaining knowledge because the more knowledge you have, the more confidence you have.
And that knowledge comes from a lot of different places, right? I mean, you can gain a ton of knowledge from watching YouTube videos, from reading books about psychology, about philosophy, about science, about religion, about spirituality. All of these things will contribute to your understanding of the reality around you. And the more you understand the reality around you, the better you can navigate it and the more confidently you can navigate it. Okay, now the final step, step number eight, is don't waste your time. If you want to feel good about yourself, feel good about what you're doing. You can have the most meaningful life purpose in the world, but if you leave that on the back burner and you're just sitting around all day watching TV, playing video games, well, you're not gonna have any confidence because you know that you're not meeting that potential and you're not working towards that goal. So don't waste your time. Spend as much time as you possibly can working toward that meaning in your life. And you'll get derailed sometimes. I mean, people get distracted, it happens, right? You start scrolling through Facebook and you realize that you spent like half an hour uh, wasted on Facebook and your, your life is not better because of it. Probably doesn't even make you happy. It's something I talk about a lot, like in this video. So figure out how to use your time in a way that actually helps your objectives in life and plan how you're actually gonna do it. One thing that I really like to do is I notice when I feel the urge to do something useless, like scroll through Facebook, for example, then I have a, a alternative ready for me. So I'll go read a book instead, for example. I'll always have a book that I'm reading that's actually helpful for my life goals. And so if I recognize that I feel like checking my phone for something that doesn't matter, then I will recognize that that's not something good to do with my time and I'll go read a book instead. If you are spending most of your time towards something meaningful and good in your life, that's something that you can feel good about and that's something that will give you that self-confidence. Believe me, it works. So those are Jordan Peterson's eight steps to rock solid self-confidence. I hope you caught that the common theme here is that confidence is earned. It's not something you're born with and it's not something that, that is just like some little psychological trick can give to you. It's not something where you just say, I am amazing, I am the best. 50,000 times and then your subconscious mind will believe it. It doesn't really seem to work that way because your subconscious mind just kind of answers, no, you're not. <laughs> Every time you, you try to say that, you have to actually start to make it true. You have to be on your mission. You have to be earning that self-confidence. So that's the message that I hope you got from this. Quit looking for some easy shortcut to having self-confidence. Get off your butt and actually go and earn it. And if you have some insights or you had some aha moments from this video, let me know in the comments. Please, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button so YouTube likes me better. And subscribe and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. And if you like this video, please give it a share so more people can benefit from it. And also check out this video, which I think you'll also really like.